Hello friends, this video on neat nuclei is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Question number 9. A certain mass of hydrogen is changed to helium by the process of fusion. The mass defect in fusion reaction is 0.02866U. The energy liberated per fusion is... Okay, so here we are given that it, we are talking about the fusion reaction. Now, normally what happens in a fusion reaction, effectively four hydrogen nuclei combine to form a helium nucleus. So that, that's what happens in an overall fusion reaction. So four hydrogens would combine to form a helium. Okay, so that means when we are talking about the energy that is getting liberated in one fusion. So, so that what is going to be that energy? So that energy would be equal to this given, this given mass defect. Now, what would be the energy equivalent to this mass defect? So energy equivalent to this mass defect would be 0 0.02866U into 931 mega electron volt. So this would be the energy equivalent to this mass defect. Now when we talk about the energy liberated per fusion, so how many fusions are taking place here? So if you look at one fusion reaction, basically four hydrogen atoms are fusing together to finally give a helium. Right. So therefore, the energy liberated per fusion will be equal to 0 0.02866 into 931 divided by 4 mega electron volt. So this value comes out to be 6.675 mega electron volt. So option C is the correct answer. Question number 10. A nucleus XZA emits an alpha particle with velocity V. The recoil speed of the daughter nucleus is. Okay. So let us first write down the equation. So that will make our job simpler. So this is the nucleus and it emits an alpha particle which is helium nucleus. So what would be the other particle? So the other particles atomic number gets reduced by 2 and mass number gets reduced by 4. So this is uh, the approximate reaction for the in this case. So we have to calculate the recoil speed of the daughter nucleus. So which is the daughter nucleus? This is the daughter nucleus and X is the parent nucleus. Now let us assume that the recoil speed of the daughter nucleus is V. So we have assumed this. Now as per the conservation of linear momentum, the net, in, the net initial momentum should be equal to the net final momentum. So net initial momentum should be equal to the net final momentum. Right? So what is the net initial momentum? So initial momentum is mass into velocity of the parent nucleus, right? Now, now when you talk about the parent nucleus, now the parent nucleus is at rest. So therefore the net, mo net initial momentum is zero. What about the final momentum? That means after the emission of alpha particle, what is going to be the final momentum? Now we have assumed that the recoil speed of y be v. Okay, let's not take it as v, let's call it v1 because v is the velocity of the alpha particle, right? So we assume this is v1. So momentum of y would be mass of y which is m1 and velocity of y which is v1, right? Plus what would be the momentum of the alpha particle? So let's say that mass of the alpha particle, how much would be the mass of alpha particle? It's 4, that's the mass number. So it would be 4 into v, where v is the velocity of the alpha particle. Now what would be m1? So if you look at y, the m1 that is mass number is given by a minus 4. So you instead of m1, you can write a minus 4 into v1 plus 4v is equal to 0. So therefore v1 is equal to minus 4v divided by a minus 4. 
So the correct option would be B. So here the minus sign just tells you the direction of recoil. Like the daughter nucleus would move in the opposite direction as when compared to the alpha particle. So that's the only significance of the negative sign. Question number 11. If a nucleus XZA emits 9 alpha and 5 beta particles, then the ratio of total protons and neutrons in the final nucleus is Okay, so here how many alpha particles it emits? It emits 9 alpha particles. Now when it emits 9 alpha particles, what would will happen to the atomic number? Now the atomic number reduces by 2 at each step, at each alpha particle emission. Now when 9 alpha particle gets emitted, then the atomic number will get reduced by 18 times 9 into 2 because at each step it is reduced by 2. So basically the atomic number will become Z minus 18. And what will happen to the mass number? Now the mass number gets reduced by 4 at each step. Now here it this is happening 9 times. So 9 multiplied by 4 which is equal to A minus 36. So this would be the mass number and this would be the atomic number after 9 alpha particles are emitted. Now what would happen after emitting 5 beta particles? Now with beta particle emission there is no impact on the mass number. So the mass number will still remain as A minus 36. But what would happen to the atomic number? So when beta particle is emitted, the atomic number increases by 1 at each step. Right? So the atomic number was Z minus 18 and this would increase by 1 at each step. Right? So this plus 1. But here it is happening 5 times. So this 1 is getting multiplied by 5. So basically this would be Z minus 13. So therefore, you have to find out the ratio of total protons by neutrons. So total protons is how much? Total protons is nothing but the atomic number. So total protons is equal to Z minus 13. And what would be total neutrons? So total number of neutrons would be equal to mass number minus atomic number. Right? So mass number is A minus 36 minus atomic number that is Z minus 13. So this would be A minus Z minus 36 plus 13. So this is equal to A minus Z minus 23. So therefore, if you find out the required ratio, this would be equal to A, this would be equal to total protons which is Z minus 13 divided by total neutrons which is A minus Z minus 23. So D is the right option. Question number 12. A mixture consists of two radioactive materials. A1 and A2 with half lives of 20 seconds and 10 seconds respectively. So you have two different materials with two different half lives. Initially the mixture has 40 grams of A1 and 160 grams of A2. The amount of the two in the mixture will become equal after how much time? Now in this case let us first assume that the amount of the two uh, amount of the two materials a1 and a2 in the mixture will become equal after time t so let so let the amount of a1 and a2 be equal after time t so now we know that n is equal to n not 1 by 2 to the power n where n not is the initial activity n is the amount or number of nuclei which is left undecayed after n number of half lives right now let's apply these for both of these materials so for the first material we can write n not a 1 by 2 to the power n how many half lives so you see here it says that for the first mixture right now I am talking which has a half life of 20 seconds. So right now we are talking about the number of half life. So you see 20 seconds correspond to one half life. So time t second would correspond to how many half lives? 1 by 20 into t right. So basically we are talking about t by 20 half lives correct. So this will be equal to n naught for b 1 by 2 to the power n again number of half lives. So again for the A2 mixture 
So this is not B but A2. This is A1 and this is A2. So for A2, half-life is 10 seconds. So 10 seconds correspond to one half-life. So T seconds would correspond to 1 by 10 into T. So number of half-lives would be T by 10. Right? Now initial number of nuclei for A1 is 40 grams and for A2 it is 160 grams. So this is 40 into 1 by 2 to the power t by 20. This is equal to 160 into 1 by 2 to the power t by 10. Fine, now let's do the calculation. So this is 40 into 4. So this is equal to 1 by 2 to the power t by 20. This is equal to 4 into 1 by 2 to the power t by 10. Now we can shift the 1 by 2 on one side. So this becomes 1 by 2 to the power t by 20 divided by 1 by 2 to the power t by 10. This is equal to 4. Or we can say 1 by 2 to the power t by 20 minus t by 10. This is equal to 4. Or 1 by 2 to the power so t by 20 minus t by 10. How much would be this value? This would be t minus 2t. This is equal to 4. Or we can say 1 by 2 to the power minus t by 20. This is equal to 2 to the power 2. Now 1 by 2 can be written as 2 provided the power will be reversed. Like the power will change from negative to positive. So after this... It can be written as 2 to the power t by 20 is equal to 2 to the power 2. So on both sides we have the same base. Therefore we can say t by 20 is equal to 2 or t is equal to 40 seconds. So 40 seconds would be the answer. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com for free quality education. You can learn with a simple four-step learning process wherein you can watch video lessons, you can ask your questions, you can refer notes and you can take a free online test. We have content for class 6 to 12 on physics, chemistry, mathematics and biology along with practical videos. So please subscribe to our channel for daily updates. Thank you.